remember, anything could be everything when you went outside to play. That tree was a spaceship, and the next day it was a pirate ship, and the next day it was some faraway land. When we used our imagination, we could make anything into anything. So every Christmas, I'd ask my parents for the Barbie dream house. Every Christmas. And every Christmas, my dad would say, you have a house and you can dream. (laughs) And it was not funny at the time, but after about the third Christmas that I heard that, I said, you know what? That's just what I'm going to do. So I remember going through my house and I am scrounging up everything I can find. So I don't want to date myself by saying way back in the day, I'll just say in a little bit ago. There were these dryer sheets, fabric sheets, that my mom used to get. It was in a box like this, and Barbie fit perfectly in that box. And I would put her in there, and that would be her bed. Now, the sheets were thin foam cushions, probably horrible for the environment. It's probably why it's 30 degrees today. And they smelled really good. They made great blankets for Barbie's bed. And my mom would wonder, why she had to always keep buying dryer sheets. Uh, Barbie had guest rooms. We need a lot of beds. And then I had those D-sized batteries. Remember those? They were like a barrel, real thick. They're like a weapon if you threw them at somebody. And I would take the D-sized battery and I put it next to the dryer sheet bed because Barbie's hand was posed perfect to tap the light on and off, Uh right? She couldn't do this. So he had a bed, and she had a light. And I did that with all the everyday, ordinary things that I could find in my house. And my dad kept wondering why his radio didn't work. Uh, Because I had lights in every one of Barbie's rooms. If they got me the dream house, things in the house would not be disappearing. But I used my imagination, and I created a whole dream town by the time I was done. And when my parents were tired of not finding things in the house, my mom comes to my room and she looks and she's appalled and she's like, this is a mess. A mess? What? This was a masterpiece. Didn't she see it? Barbie had a four car garage with my little shoe boxes and she had a pool, this big Tupperware bowl filled with water I knew she thought was gonna spill. And I was explaining to her, mom, look, this is, this is beautiful, it's a masterpiece. And she was like, no, it's a mess. My mom couldn't see what I saw cause she didn't believe what I believed. See, it wasn't her vision for those things in the house. To her, it was ordinary, random plain, but to me, oh, it had possibility and purpose. As the creator, I saw a masterpiece. She couldn't see what I saw because she didn't believe what I believed. And I wonder how often God feels that way about us, that we don't see ourselves the way he sees us that we don't believe about us what he believes about us. And especially as women, gentlemen, there's plenty for you to get out of today, but I'm partial to the ladies for calendar reasons. Uh, But seriously, I believe God wants his daughters to reclaim their image, to not only see ourselves the way he sees us, but to believe it. Because he's so lovingly, and uniquely formed each of us. The Bible says intricately and skillfully weaved us together. Before the foundations of the world, he knew Sarah and Brenda and Sam. He knew us. He had a purpose and a plan for each and every one of us. But where along life have situations and circumstance, trials and challenges start to dull the image of that beautifully, meticulously made masterpiece. Today, I believe that God wants to change that image. And so he aptly titled this message, Become What You Believe. 
When you believe what God said about you, you'll be who God said you are. The people who really know me are familiar with what I lovingly call the Leah life questions. Leah life questions were born because we sit in this service Sunday after Sunday, and we hear these dynamic messages from Pastor Anthony and Pastor Brenda, and I hear it, and I get all excited, and then I go home and reflect on it and say, but how? How do I have all the good things I heard. If, if Pastor Anthony said that Abraham was not to take a road trip to Egypt, how do I avoid the Egypts of my life? When Pastor Brenda said, we got next, I did not think next was here, but when she said, we got next, how, what does that look like in my life? How do I apply it? And so from going from how do we hear to how do we do, I have Leah life questions. Now, I'm a visual learner, so do you mind taking a small journey with me to unpack how we become what we believe? When I thought about this, the Leah life questions that came up were, what do you believe about yourself? What do you believe about yourself? Of all the beautiful things that God's word says about us, is that what comes to mind first or is the first thing that comes up what we've allowed perhaps co-workers to tell us about ourselves or family members or maybe even people that are closest to us? Do we believe the things we've gone through have become us? And then when you look in the mirror, what do you see physically and spiritually? Can we have a Real Talk Sunday moment? As women, looking in the mirror can be challenging. I'll be the first to raise my hand. Say, sometimes the image I see in the mirror is not pleasing to me. I might not like how my hair looks that day. I might not like how I look in a certain outfit that day. And looking in the mirror physically can be hard because I'm seeing something I don't want to see. How do I fall in love with the image in the mirror? How do, I, how do I see through my spiritual eyes and see the image that God created me to be? Today is Mother's Day. And as much as we celebrate it, there may be some of us where today is a little hard. There might be some of us whose relationships with our moms might not have been what we want to give flowers and balloons about today. But God, but God, maybe you wanted to be a mother by today and it hasn't happened yet. Maybe this day on the calendar is a little harder. And when we look in the mirrors, we don't necessarily like what we see. We might look great to others on the outside. It takes a lot to put on these smiles. It takes a lot to stand up tall, but you know that is such a beautiful strength that God has given women from the beginning of time. No matter what trials we've endured, what things we've gone through, God has always given us this inside burning and strength to pull ourselves up. When we think about the load that moms, that women carry, look how God used women in the Bible. Such a tremendous work that he did in ministry through women. And yet when we look in the mirrors, we might see some things that we don't like to see. What are some of the things that we see on our mirrors? Perhaps we see not enough, depressed, hurt, broken, lonely, fearful, insecurities, anger, resentment, disappointment, guilt. What we see is like a magnet and it draws us towards it. So what's in your mirror? Are we looking at distorted images of ourselves in the mirror? When we see those things that are not like God describes us, 
then it's a distortion and it's time to get a new mirror. It's time to see royalty. Now, I can't see all the faces, but I think I see a couple going, royalty? Did I hear you say royalty? Leah, you don't know what I've been through. What I've been through is not royalty. People don't treat royalty this way. Royalty doesn't do some of the things I've done. You know what? I don't know everything you've gone through, but I know what I've gone through. I know what I've come through. And what I do know is that we are not what we went through. The enemy knows when you hear something over and over and over again, when you see something over and over and over again, you will believe it. And eventually you'll become it. That's his strategy. We're putting him on blast today because today is no more. The more he can put those negative images, distorted images out in front of us and we keep seeing them, eventually they seep in and we start to become them. So how do we unbelieve and how do we unbecome those images in the mirror? I'm glad you asked. How do we believe what God said about us so we can be who God said we are. Point number one, renew your mind. Now, this is not brand new theology. It might not sound like earth shattering news, but it is the key to our development as believers. We must renew our minds with how God sees us. So let's look at Romans 12 too. And I like the amplified because it amplifies. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you spiritually mature. Let's pause right there. There's freedom right there, friends. See, God isn't expecting an overnight uh, change. He said progressively changed. So we can let go of the weight and and the unrealistic expectation that we're going to get everything right every time. No, he said progressively changed. So we could start shouting right there. If we have a process, oh, Pastor Anthony just said earlier this week, trust the process. God takes us through this process. So be transformed, progressively changed by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes. I love how God gives us the answers to the test. He's so good to us. And when we ask the question, uh, how do we renew our minds, God? There's the answer. By focusing on godly values. Those things we saw in the mirror earlier, those aren't godly values. Those aren't ethical attitudes. That's a distorted image. So that's our clue right there. That's not what needs to be in front of us. So that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. Now, transformed in this text comes from the Greek word meaning metamorphosis. As soon as you hear that word, the first thing that comes to mind for me is the butterfly. Metamorphosis butterfly, the little creepy crawly caterpillar, and it's inching along, and it goes into the cocoon, and it's dark, and it's cramped, and then it emerges, the beautiful butterfly. Do you know what is super spectacular about that butterfly? It never goes back to being a caterpillar. Metamorphosis refers to a process that leads to an outward permanent change. Now think about this. Same scripture from the Message Bible. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, Fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Right? Okay, one more time, one more time. The New Living Translation. Leah, why are you showing us the same thing in all these different translations? Because God is so dynamic. 
that we can't always take them in at one time. I told you the, the application piece here, how? How do we do these things? So we have to look at how God has shown us the way to do this, all these different ways. So New Living Translation, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. I love it because it's plain. God said, don't do it. So let's not do it. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Now that's a shouting scripture right there. Number one, he gives us uh, clear instructions. Don't do this. Let me do that. You do this and then. It doesn't get any plainer than that. God's will for us is for our minds to be transformed, an inward work that results in a permanent outward change. What we take in on the inside to be permanently reflected on the outside, a butterfly that never goes back to being a caterpillar. So let's take a quick inventory. Do we see and hear more of what God's word says about us, or are we hearing and seeing more of what the world and external things are saying about us? Are our mirrors reflecting what we've allowed other people and situations to convince us we are versus what God has made us to be? Don't answer, just look here, look this way. It's okay, it's transformation day. So we understand how the images we see are in the mirror. And we know in order to change that, we have to renew our minds with what God says about us. And then what? Point number two, change what you believe. Look at what happens here in Matthew 9, 27 through 30 in the message. This is awesome. As Jesus left the house, he was followed by two blind men crying out, mercy, son of David, mercy on us. When Jesus got home, the blind men went in with him. Now that's a bold kind of move right there. That Jesus is at his home and they followed him in his house. Jesus said to them, do you really believe I can do this? And they said, why, yes, master. He touched their eyes and said, become what you believe. It happened and they saw. Become what you believe. Now you have to understand what happened earlier in this chapter. This is where I geek out over the word of God and how awesome God is in building things. So chapter nine of Matthew, right? We remember the woman with the issue of blood. She uh, pressed her way through the crowds to get to Jesus. Jesus was on the move. All to touch the hem of his garment. Why? Because she believed. She didn't need to talk to him. She didn't want to bother him. She knew if she could just get to his hem, she believed that much that she would be healed. And she was. But why was Jesus in such a hurry? Where was he going? Right before she touched him, Jesus was talking to a Jewish leader whose daughter had just died. And the Jewish leader said, if you come, I know she will live. And she was already dead. But this leader believed that not even death is final when Jesus shows up. And if you would just come, I know she will live. So Jesus is on the mission. He's going through the crowds. The woman with the issue of blood, she believes, she touches him. He gets to the house and there's all these people there. I love the message. It says they were bringing casseroles. There was a wake going on. Why? Because the daughter had died. Jesus sends everyone out of the house. Why does he do this? Because they were filled with disbelief. They were ridiculing him, almost like, well, you're a day late and a dollar short. She's already gone. No, Jesus couldn't have that disbelief in the house. Look at the pattern here. When people believed, Jesus moved. When people believed, Miracles happened. When people believed the power of God showed up and changed things that nobody thought could be changed. And so he kicks everybody out. Then, then he raises the little girl back from the dead. So he's done all that. He's put in his eight hours. He's done a lot of work. 
And now he is on his way home. And that's where these two blind men are, as if he hasn't done enough. But let's look at this one more time in the Passion Translation. I love this translation because it comes right from the lens of the heart of God. It says, as Jesus left the house, referring to the Jewish leader's house, two blind men began following him, shouting out over and over, son of David, show us mercy and heal us. And they followed him right into the house where Jesus was staying. So Jesus asked them, do you believe that I have the power to restore sight to your eyes? And they replied, yes, Lord, we believe. Then Jesus put his hands over their eyes and said, you'll have what your faith expects. And instantly they could see what brought the sight back to their eyes. They believed. Now the Bible tells us all kinds of ways Jesus has restored sight before. But this time he didn't just spit on them. He didn't put mud on them. He didn't snap his fingers. He asked them, what do you believe? And it wasn't until they believed. Then he said, you'll have what your faith expects. They believe. Then they're healed. Their faith expected sight because they believed Jesus could restore it. What does your faith expect? Does it expect the distorted images in the mirror because that's what you have come to believe about yourself? In order to believe what God has said about you, you have to, point three, create a new lens. To see ourselves the way God sees us means we have to clean that old, negative, distorted lens and create new God lenses. So how do we do that? Romans 10, 9 through 10. We know this as the salvation scripture. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For with the heart, one believes and is justified. And with the mouth, one confesses and is saved. This is not just for salvation. This is the God formula for how he does everything. Believe, then speak. How did God create the world and everything in it? He knew he wanted fellowship with his special creation. He believed it in his heart and then he spoke, light be and light was. Job twenty two twenty eight 28 in the Amplified says, well, you will also decide, believe and decree a thing, confess, and it will be established for you. This is how we create the new lens. We believe what God says about us and then we confess it over and over and over again, like the blind men who cried out to Jesus over and over, have mercy on us until we see it and become what we believe. So you might not have seen the things that God has said in your mirror before. Maybe you saw not enough, but today you'll see Colossians 2.10. I am complete in him who is the head over all rule and authority. You might have seen depressed in the old mirror. But today you see Philippians 4, 7. I have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. You might have seen rejection, but today you see 1 Peter 2 and 9. I am chosen by God who called me out of darkness and sin and into the light of life of Christ. Whatever you saw before, today replace it with, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Replace it with I am God's workmanship, created in Christ to do good works that he has prepared for me to do. Replace it with I am born again, spiritually transformed, renewed and set apart for God's purpose. Replace it with I am a new creation in Christ. I am renewed in the knowledge of God. I am a joint heir with Christ. I am more than a conqueror who loves me. I am not ruled by fear because the Holy Spirit lives in me and gives me his power, love and self-control. 
Replace it today with I have everything I need to live a godly life and I am equipped to live in his divine nature. Replace it today with I am an ambassador for Christ. I am the righteousness of God. I am the head and not the tail. I am the light of the world. I am healed and whole in Jesus. No matter what the world has said about you, no matter what you've gone through before in your life, you are not what you went through. You are a child of the most high God. You were intricately and beautifully formed and he sees you as beautiful and amazing and glorious in his sight. You are saved by grace, raised up with Christ, and seated with him in heavenly places. You are not alone. God never leaves you. You, re you recite today, I am strengthened with all power according to his glorious might. I am chosen. I am redeemed. Christ lives in me, and I live by faith in him and his love for me. When you believe what God said about you, you'll become who God said you are. It won't matter what anyone else says or think. You will stand tall and proud and bold in that mirror. And you will believe and confess the word of God over your life. And the good, good plan that he has for you, that he had before he created and said, light be, will start to manifest and show up in your life. Today is your transformation day. Today is the day that we reclaim our image in God. Today we stand bold as daughters of God, of the most high. Our faith expects his plans to be good for us. Our faith expects that like David, we'll see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It's transformation day, family. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And today we're renewing our minds with what God says about us. So we will be who God says we are. To help us with our transformation, each wonderful lady will be leaving today with their own special mirror for you to look in and confess all the things that God said you are. May you never forget who you are in Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, oh, how we thank you. How we thank you for your precious word. Thank you, Father God, for reminding us who you created us to be. Thank you, Lord God, for clearing off those old mirrors and restoring your right image in us today. Father God, our minds are transformed, our hearts are renewed, and we are on fire to walk boldly in who you called us to be. Father God, if for all of us who are listening here today, let your Holy Spirit go with us, continuing to remind us that you love us so much You've given us all the beautiful words in your love letter to remind us why you even created us to begin with. Help us, Father God, to become what we believe and to believe every word that you said. And Lord God, you said your word does not return to you void. So we have confidence that that which we speak, it will come to pass. We will become what we believe. In Jesus' name. Yes. If there is anyone among us who does not know Jesus, because these are his promises to his children, and they come to us as children of God. If when you look in your mirror, there's something missing, and there's not a light or something that shines in you that that helps you to remember who you are. If you don't have that ever so beautiful relationship with a loving God who sits high but comes so very low to hold us in his loving arms, then I would invite you today to open your heart and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Or perhaps you've been looking in that old mirror a little too long and you've walked away from the fellowship that you once so wonderfully enjoyed having. And we say, come home today, it's transformation day. And so if you haven't, let's just pray this simple prayer. Heavenly Father, I receive you in my heart as Lord and Savior. I believe that you died on an old rugged cross, that you were buried, and that three days later you rose again for me 
You now sit at the right hand of God, interceding for me. I receive you in my heart as my Lord and Savior. And I thank you, Father, that this is my transformation day. Amen. God, we love you. We honor you. That you are definitely Jaira, Jehovah Jaira in our life right now, Lord God. You are everything that we need, Lord God. You are Alpha and Omega, and we know that you sit in between of everything right now, Lord God. We honor you. We love you. We thank you for this word that was preached on today. Filling in our hearts even right now, Lord God. Let it fall on good ground. Let it be watered, and we look forward to the harvest that's getting ready to come. Come on, if you believe that family, come on, shout amen. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, can we just put our hands together for Leah Pickett again for that awesome, awesome word. Amen, amen, amen. Well, hey guys, thank you so much for worshiping with us today. My name is Pastor Anthony, my beautiful bride, Pastor Brenda. We have the opportunity to, to leave this congregation. Come on, family, if you're your first time, can we put our hands together for all of our first time guests? But hey, maybe on your way in, if you, if you haven't, please grab a connect card. One of the great ways to connect with us here at Celebration Church. Maybe you have a prayer request. Hey, me, maybe God just moved in your life and we want to celebrate that. Or maybe you're even looking to get connected to the house. Definitely fill out the connect card. Drop it in the box. Come on, we got an amazing team that's waiting to connect with you. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, let's stay in this posture of worship with the bringing of our tithes and the giving of our offering. The ways will we'll be on the screen for, for, for all of you guys, safe and secure. We always love to say that. But, but family, what, what I love about the congregation, here's what I love about it. And I thank you guys so much for your generosity. Thank you for your obedience, even as Pastor Brenda mentioned um, even early in the service. Thank you so much for your yes. This Mother's Day, we had a special opportunity to partner with the Carpenter Shelter that's located right there in the city of Alexandria, one of the longest running shelters in the city of Alexandria. And we were able, here it is, through your giving, through your obedience, we were able, the team, and through your giving, we were able to partner with single mothers that they're able to celebrate, not just receive the love of Christ, the love of Christ from, from you guys, but also meet them with giving a blessing bag so they can enjoy their Mother's Day on today, that they feel well, they feel welcome, they feel loved, they feel cherished. Everything that Pastor Leah, come on, Pastor Leah, uh, preached about earlier, about looking into the mirror, hear this family, this is what I love, this is what I love about our church so much. Through, through our obedience, those individual women are able to look into a new mirror today and say, you know what, God loves me. God has called me. God has a purpose. I just want to say thank you. When we continue to lean in with our obedience through our generosity of giving, hear this family, hear this. You're making a difference. You're making a difference. Amen. Let's pray over the offering. Father God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you so much. That through this offering, we lift it up to you even right now, Lord God. And only what you can do, Lord God, that you can bless it. We ask that you begin to move through this vehicle of Celebration Church. That for every need that needs to be met, Lord God, we ask that you begin to take the offering. We ask that you begin to take the giving and the tithe. And we ask that you bless it, you multiply it. It's in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. amen amen ladies get excited because sisterhood is coming up <laughs> sisterhood is may the 21st at 11 a.m and we will be having brunch <laughs> come brunch with me on may the 21st um the portal opened up today and we have a limited amount of seats. So please register. You can register through the QR code that is being provided for you. I am looking forward to brunching with you ladies on May the 21st at 11 a.m. And we also have childcare available for only $10 and it's on a Saturday. So you get to bring the babies, drop them off and then brunch. <laughs> Come on, awesome, awesome. Fellas, come on, we gotta we gotta wait till June. But the ladies, you're gonna definitely get to have your good time. But that's gonna be awesome. But I got one more announcement to share with you guys. Speaking about serving, come on, the fifth Sunday of this month. Come on, somebody say serve Sunday. 
Serve Sunday. Serve Sunday is right around the corner, family. Come on, we will not be having church right here in the Regu uh, Theater, but here the church is not closed. We're actually, I love the vision behind this. We're actually going to actually be mobilizing the church. We're just not going to go, we're just not going to attend church, but we're actually going to go into the community and be the church and do church family. I'm super excited for this. Beginning next week, we'll have all of the information, how you can sign up, how you can invite people, but family, get ready. Come on, I'm telling you, it's going to be awesome. I cannot wait for your families and your friends to come out and join forces with the team here and serve our community. Let's spread the love of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen.